remnants of other cultures have invaded the country. A religious hostility towards the Indian tradition and serious attempt to replace it by a foreign religion or a foreign political philosophy continues to threaten our cultural heritage, political stability, national security, and communal harmony. What is the direction? It is this subject as a backdrop. Samskriti Foundation has arranged a platform and invited all the experts to throw an objective and educative light on the problem. Respected gathering and eminent personalities, I take this opportunity to invite you all to this morning session on the topic, cultural nationalism, the basis of our national identity. The subject is vast and multidimensional, but the situation demands an immediate solution, perhaps only by strong action. Just this one step right now. A very good morning to you all again. Now, I welcome the guests to the dais. Our chief guest, Dr. Palle Ramaragaru, Sri V. Anil Reddy. He will accompany the chief guest onto the dais. Sri V. Anil Reddy, industrialist, senior vice president, FAPSI. Kala Tapasvi K. Vishwanath Garu, Sri Sumanth Paranji, Senior Broadcast Professional, will accompany him onto the dais. Dr. Varaprasad Reddy Garu will be accompanied by Mr. Nagi Reddy. Sri Dattaji Hosbale Garu, I request Sri Tri Tirputi Rao Garu to accompany him onto the dais. Jyoti Prajwalana Karakrama Mantundi. Srimati Neha Shailendar, a software professional, will render a song. चरित्र निर्माण न भूले निर्माणों के पावन युग में हम चरित्र निर्माण न भूले स्वार्थ साधना की आंधी में वसुधा का कल्याण न निर्माणों के पावन युग में हम चरित्र निर्माण न भूले माना अगम अगाध सिंधु है संघर्षों का पार नहीं है किंतु डूबना मझधारों में साहस को स्वीकार नहीं है जटिल समस्या सुलझाने को नूतन 
अनुसंधान न भूले निर्माणों के पावन युग में हम चरित्र निर्माण न भूले शील विनय आदर्श श्रेष्ठता तार बिना झनकार नहीं है शिक्षा क्या स्वर साध सकेगी यदि नैतिक आधार नहीं है कीर्ति कौ मोदी की गरिमा में संस्कृति का सम्मान न भूले निर्माणों के पावन युग में हम चरित्र निर्माण न भूले आविष्कारों की कृतियों में यदि मानव का प्यार नहीं है सृजनहीन विज्ञान व्यर्थ है प्राणी का उपकार नहीं है भौतिकता के उत्थानों में जीवन का उत्थान न भूले निर्माणों के पावन युग में हम चरित्र निर्माण न भूले स्वार्थ साधना की आंधी में वसुधा का कल्याण न भूले निर्माणों के पावन युग में हम चरित्र निर्माण न भूले हम चरित्र निर्माण न भूले रिस्पेक्टेड चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ टूडेज फंक्शन पद्म विभूषण प्रोफेसर पल्ले रामराव गारू respected guests of honors of today's program padma bhushan dr varaprasad reddy garu padma shri kala tapasvi dr vishwanath garu the chairman of uh, sanskruti foundation shri raju garu distinguished guests sisters and brothers i am really honored to be in the midst of you all and particularly on the dais with such stalwarts and eminent people who are contributed remarkably in their specialized areas respected elders from the bottom of my heart i pay respects to you i touch your feet for the remarkable contribution that you have made to both culture and nation in your areas i said it is an honor to me but also i know how it is difficult for me to be here on this dais to address to you when such towering personalities has spoken in hindi it is called 
gagar means sagar that means in a small pot you have filled the whole ocean you must be knowing the homeopathy pills are very small pills but with high potency so these three guests today what they have prescribed to us is those such homeopathic pills with high potency i do not think i will be able to add much more to what already has been told and you have much, you have already noticed that all the three guests are padma awardees i am an ordinary social worker and they are the specialists specialists in their chosen fields i am a wanderer in this country moving from one place to another and as you all know the rolling stone gathers no mass and uh, i thought i would be able to speak in my mother tongue i am from the neighboring state what an unfortunate scene today in india i am from karnataka i speak kannada because it is my mother tongue i fairly understand telugu chala baga artham aitundi konta konta maatladtanu kuda but i cannot express thoughts in continuously fluently in a language which belongs to my family and we live in states for years and years but we do not pick up the language and we all have to take shelter and an indian language the language is understood by 2% of this land or less than that of course i have been a student of english literature i could have spoken in hindi or kannada or even broken telugu but i should not have done it because it's an insult to people who mother tongue is here the telugu so this is our problem today our education has not empowered us to speak in a language which is essentially a bharatiya language so that it is understood in any part of the country where we have failed i do not understand it is not the subject of the day that's why i do not dwell upon that much and is uh, today we have been discussing cultural nationalism i wrote to organizers that remembering cultural nationalism they have said no doubt for the cultural nationalism the people you have invited as guests and guests of honor they are eminently suitable to this thing and today is a very special day also not because of 30th 31st may but because it is jeshth shukla trayodashi and today is the day in 1674 in the fort of raigad in maharashtra of today chatrapati shivaji maharaj became chatrapati and it is coronation day of shri shivaji maharaj how many students of today's generation who are going to schools and colleges and universities will take pride in this fact that uh, in the most difficult times of our history a young man stood up to declare yes i will establish an empire 
he did not want to become a king to sit on a throne but he wanted to play a role in the national life of this country to pay his debt back to the society to create invincible confidence in the people that we can live as an independent people not to be trampled under the feet of foreign invaders but this country's history books have taught us that he was a maratha king no man he expressed himself that i am a maratha king it is the british who told that he is a maratha king again i am not going to much details of those things because the topic is culture and nationalism these things are essential ingredients that we should understand culture nationalism naturally it uh, provokes us to discuss the term nation and nationalism friends the nationalism as a term is considered to be a modern one it is of modern origin it is said that the concept of modern nation state developed after the french revolution in 1789 whether nationalism as a concept for social development or political ideology is modern may be a matter of a historic interpretation nevertheless the basic proposition to be appreciated here is that uh, nations have existed since ancient times nationalism as a concept may be of modern origin but the nations have existed what is a nation what ingredients when they are constituted become a nation there is no common definition for a nation the political scientists the historians the scholars they differ recently when i refer to some of the great scholars of the west who can be called the authorities on the subject like jas mill robert rice gilcrest c d bowman garner german blunt 60 stalin not that stalin junior huxley gibbons g b on zimmerin fisher dongel snyder cohen i tried to call out the definition for nation that these scholars have expressed barring a one or two sentences nothing is common because they belong to various periods in history and they lived in different parts of the world and different socio cultural setup their expressions are their definitions about nation also differ there is one body which you all know united nations organization uno un it says it is the united nations organization is it nations organization if it is a nations organization whether un has given any particular definition to you know the nation the term nation no what is the nation according to united nations organization who are the member countries in modern times 
what we call as a nation state a government a sovereignty a political setup may be having its currency and uh, army so this becomes a nation in today's parlance that's why it's uh, referred to as nation state it is a political boundary a territorial demarcation it has a political arrangement it enjoys a political sovereignty it has an administrative setup it deals with a currency of its own country and such entity becomes nation according to united nations because it they become the member nations they are member states in fact the un was should be called united nation state organizations it is not nations organizations what is a nation then people have all, as i said they have given different uh, definitions anthony d smith who is a political scientist he says his definition of the concept of nation as a human community occupying a homeland and having common myths and a shared history a common public culture a single economy and common rights and duties for all members Rupert Emerson another scholar he defines nation in terms of a sense of belonging to a community of people who share the same heritages and would like to share the common future Ernest Renan French writer in 1882 he has elaborately explained what is a nation in modern terms he says to have a common glories in the past and to have a common will in the present to have performed great deeds together to wish to perform still more these are the essential conditions for being a people and these people are the nation and the nation is the soul the spiritual principle of the people living in a particular land here comes french scholar renan says nation is the soul of a people nation is the spiritual principle a westerner says this the second sarasangha chalak of the organization which i belong to the rashtriya swayamsevak sang shri guruji golwalkar he used to describe the attributes of people to constitute a nation common history common traditions common feelings of friendship and enmity common aspirations about future and common set of heroes a society having these in its homeland as the progeny putra roopi samaj there is a land and the people who feel that they are the sons and daughters of that land and such people with such homeland they constitute a nation so there are three essential ingredients to make a nation the land the people and the culture or the value system that they follow or the practice jan bhumi aur sanskriti these three are the essential ingredients components that form a nation the territorial religious political connotations or the definitions of a nation or of modern origin because in the modern times after the invasions from one country to another for various reasons and with intentions and agendas the nation states have emerged 
with a definite demarcation of the land and sovereignty as i already explained i'll give you an example indonesia has been a nation for many years in 1991 a small part of the eastern indonesia it called east timor got separated from indonesia and it was recognized by united nations and it became a member state of the united nations and today from 1991 onwards east timor is a nation so any part of a nation till today if it gets separated tomorrow suddenly it becomes a nation so that is not the real uh, concept of a nation that is nation state but today nation and nation state are not uh, separately understood there is either a confusion or a mix up things so that is why the country the nation the state the sovereignty all together we think or today students are taught that it's a nation so the basis for any nation is culture and that culture is being practiced by the people and those people are living on a particular land which they consider to be their motherland or fatherland mata bhumi prithu putroham prithivyah it is what the atharveda has said the prithvi is my mata the land is my mother and i am the son of this mother and this concept is of the atharveda times so the concept of people looking up to their land where they are living they get sustained because of the resources that uh, are available on that land and because of this nourishing and sustenance and upholding they feel that uh, that is their mother and because of this mother and the child relationship he has a special affinity to the land and these children of that motherland are ready to sacrifice to any extent to safeguard the interests of that motherland why such a relation that bondage takes birth it is inexplicable but it is there and this is there in all parts of the world for all times of history it has been there so this inexplicable experience of the people from time immemorial has given birth to the concept of the nation so when we see the history of the world it is by and large a history of dynasties and empires we don't find nations and independent sovereign political entities but nations as cultural entities did exist and during the last 500 years they started asserting their identities it is the first in the modern times it is the france which asserted in the western part of the world it separated from the holy roman empire and there was a mou between the holy roman empire and the people of the french or the king of the france that they will practice a different religion they will speak their french language and that is why they are a different nation there are the people who speak different languages they constituted a group and they call themselves to be a nation that is why the french people the english people that is why those days they were the kings of those people were called the king of french king of english not the land and later on 
they found that the affinity towards land is much more than the affinity to the language. If you permit me, I will take a recent example of Andhra and Telangana. Affinity to the language would not have separated you. Affinity to the land has separated you. It is the same language. You all take pride, I also, in the language of Telugu, both Andhra and Telangana. But Andhra and Telangana is there. Of course, they are not two different nations. But the very interesting thing is in Telugu, Rashtra is called Rajya and Jati is Rashtra, which other part of the... Uh, the nation is Jati in Telugu and the state is Rashtra, as I know. So that's why in some time, when you speak in Hindi, in Telugu, among Telugu people, the, when repeatedly if you say Rashtra, it gets confused. That's why it is better to take the word nation. Although, nation and culture, both are not Rashtra and Sanskriti. What Sanskriti means is not culture. What Rashtra is, not nation. What Dharma is, not religion. Because of the shortage or the limitations of a language, any language, you cannot express what is essentially in the English language in our Indian languages and vice versa. I am not telling that whether that language is great or this language is great. That is not the case. The thing is, every term has its own cultural component and cultural roots. That is why you cannot efficiently, fully, totally, comprehensively translate the term into another language. That is, the Sanskriti's root is different. The Rashtra's root is different. Raj, Rastra, that which gives the light, is nation. But nation's root is native. So nation and Rashtra are not one and the same, but uh, because of, for our convenience, today we are in culture is the Sanskriti and nation is Rashtra or Jati, as it is in Telugu. So now what I was telling is that France became a nation because they went into a MOU with the Ho Holy Roman Empire and later on they themselves started calling the France as the land, French land, not only the language. The King of England. It is a later development. Because they were moving, all were moving from one place to another. That is why they speaking one language. And when they started uh, living on a particular piece of land and started agriculture, farming land, eating from the producers of the land, then this affinity developed. And ultimately they felt that uh, we are the children of that land. You can call it fatherland or motherland as the case may be. The thing is, the ethnicity, the cultural specialities of the group of people is the ethnicity. Because of this common public culture, the generally the common social norms and ideals, common aspirations, common understanding of the past, the people who feel that we belong to one history, one past, we have some common problems, our understanding of the present and our aspirations for the future, when they are common, some common ideals, those people are called a nation. That's why nation is not a territorial connotation, not a political connotation, it is a cultural connotation because it expresses that Rashtra or say nation is people. In Telugu I have heard 
that there is one term deshamante mannalla manishi ha desh man man kaadu manishi that is what i am telling so nation is not the land only nation is the people what's culture culture is the expression of the soul of a nation culture is not only dance and drama culture expresses the soul of a nation the soul has a, its past it has an aspiration a dream to fulfill and that soul is existing on the people commonly that is why you feel that uh, he is manavallu he is our man when you go to maharashtra a telugu man will become a, our man when you go to england any indian becomes our man so that identity gets expanded so this uh, sense of belonging to other person is because of the existence of the same part of the soul and that soul gets expressed and that is culture in case of bharat or india the soul of india is spirituality that is what vivekananda mahatma gandhi rabindranath tagore all great scholars and saints and sages of this country from time immemorial from vedic times to the freedom struggle unequivocally they have come to one conclusion that this nation's uh, energy is because there is a spirituality there that is why this land is worshiped diana ek a western author has recently authored a voluminous book about india and its geography and she has explained in detail about the shakti peetas the dwadash jyotirlinga saurashtra somanathancha the 12 jyotirlingas char dhamas chatur dham and all these things she has explained and this uh, book is called sacred geography about india she says diana x says this is sacred geography our people have always worship this land with that uh, sacredness in mind the land as sacred that's why everything on this land is also sacred the flora and fauna the river the holy river the mountain is a holy mountain a stone is a sacred stone every part of this land becomes so sacred for all in every people are the scholars and this has been the case for centuries and millennia and why people have also gone to the same uh, geographical area one shankaracharya starts from kaladi of kerala by foot he visits all four corners of the country there was no sovereignty declared there was no union central government of the day but people had understood that uh, south to himalayas and north to hind mahasagar that is the indian ocean this land is bharata varsha and the people of this land the, the children of this land are called bharatiyas uttaram yat samudrasya himadreshcha iva dakshinam varsham tad bharatam nama bharati yatra santati and this concept of mata bhumi putroham prithivyah and the bharata varsha and their children and her children and this is the modern day expression of bharat mata ki jai or vande mataram otherwise they would not have been bharat mata ki jai this is the cultural heritage that has come down to us from time immemorial 
so that is why there is an affinity towards this land and that cultural expression of the soul of this land that is why here kala tapasvi vishnath ji will agree with me that all art music and art forms they have been uh, looked upon as worship of uh, saraswati or shiva or parvati why this is how this nation has understood it learning knowledge it is jnana sadhana it is saraswati aradhana in this land dealing with wealth is worshiping of uh, lakshmi just to in vande matram we said tum hi durga dhacha prana dharini kamala kamala dal viharini vani vidya dayini when vande matram was composed by bankim chandra chatterjee though it is in Bang Bang bangla people resonated from punjab and kerala from andhra pradesh and maharashtra as one people with one voice they stood up why it was possible because every individual felt that this vande matram is not only about the bengal and this feeling is the cultural oneness that is manifested through our literature language art music and other fact so this is the cultural heritage of this country territorially geographically you may not be having a particular land with a political sovereignty or a king ruling over there may be 560 kings but there is one nation but there have been some intellectuals particularly professing the leftist ideology they have always been telling that this was never a nation number 1 because the concept of nation is altogether modern one that is why india has never been a nation because it has never been a nation what then it is it is one single state because there is a government there is a sovereignty there is a law there is a constitution and because there is so much of variety and diversity of language living style customs and traditions gods and goddesses the modes of worships and that is why this is like a subcontinent that is why this is a multi nation state it is many nations under one state but the cultural nationalism concept clearly proves that this is not one state and many nations but it is one nation but many states and that is what from time immemorial from the vedic times it can be proved from time to time it can be seen otherwise as i said shankaracharya why guru nanak should have traveled all why people said gange ch yamune ch eva godavari saraswati narmade sindhu kaveri jaleshmin sannidhim kuru why a parvati being a kanya kumari at kanya kumari stands on one leg with the penance for shiva who is at the other end of the land on himalayas this has been proved not that the parvati was standing there who has seen i don't know but what is the concept from one corner to the another corner this is one land this is one nation and this is one culture and this is one people i remember in an incident when sri cm anna durai the founder of dravida munnetra karagam party and who was the chief minister of tamil nadu was also a rajya sabha member for some time when in 1962 china invaded us generally the dk and dmk movement have been telling that we have nothing to do with the northern part hindi is not our thing hindustan is not our thing we are a separate nation tamil nadu is separate all these things uh, dk and dmk movement have been uh, telling nowadays they have changed that the different thing so in those days 
సీఎం అన్నాదురే బీంగ్ ఏ రాజ్యసభ మెంబర్ వెన్ చైనా ఇన్వైటెడ్ అండ్ దెర్ ఆర్ ద రెజల్యూషన్ టు యునానిమస్ రెజల్యూషన్ అండ్ అగెయిన్స్ట్ ది ఇన్వేషన్ అండ్ అరౌజింగ్ ది పీపుల్స్ ఫీలింగ్స్ అండ్ హియర్ కమ్స్ శ్రీ అన్నాదురై who made an eloquent speech on the oneness of india and how himalaya is the abode of shiva who we are all shaivas from south and that abode of shiva should be protected people after the eloquent speech of annadurai after coming out in the central hall said annadurai ji you have always been opposing northern no no that may be different thing but when it comes to culture we are one ram dr ram manohar lohia was a socialist as we all know a great socialist he wrote a beautiful article with the caption ram krishna shiva and in that essay a, it is a literary piece i plead you to go through that essay and dr lohia says there it is the ram who has united us from north to south because from sarayu bank he comes down to rameshwaram and he has united this great ancient nation from north to south and it is the krishna who from manipur to dwarka who has moved the entire the krishna history says that he has moved from east to west so he has united us culturally psychologically east west and shiva is present in all parts of this country the ram krishna shiva are the concept of the unification of culturally of this land this is what ram manohar lohia says if you go through those poetic lines of ram manohar lohia without seeing the author's name i am sure you will feel that it is swami vivekananda who is speaking but when you say that it is ram manohar lohi a socialist confirmed socialist speaking about the lord shiva and ram and krishna and as the unifiers of this great land and that is why this is one nation not because of the territorial unity not because of the government not because of the constitution not because of the sovereignty not because of one currency not at all for one language because it is not one language not because of it is one religion because here there have been shaiva vaishnava ganapatya shakta ya shaiva samupasate shiva iti brahmeti vedantino bauddha buddha iti pramana patava kartyete nayayika many people many religions but this has been one culture and that has expressed not only through some religious acts and practices of worship people have expressed it in different fashions and different manners so friends that's why without taking much time because i know uh, although as a principal speaker i could have taken the combined time of the three earlier speakers uh, i should uh, now dwell upon one or two things and uh, end there i will the supreme court case to support my proposition of this cultural nationalism i would like to quote uh, justice uh, p n bhagavati who observed in uh, pradeep jain's case justice bhagavati observes it is an interesting fact of history that india was forged into a nation neither on account of a common language nor on account of the continued existence of a single political regime over its territories not because of common language not because of political regime but on account of a common culture evolved over the centuries it is cultural unity something more fundamental and enduring than any other bond which may unite the people of a country together which has welded this country into a nation when i read the next sentence by sir vincent smith who has been a historian 
you will feel how it resounds in the verdict of uh, justice bhagavati sir vincent smith says a historian india beyond all doubts possesses a deep underlying fundamental unity far more profound than which it is achieved by either geographical isolation or political suzerainty this unity transcends all various diversities of caste creed race color he even says race but we are one race that is a different thing color language and custom so this unity the underlying unity that transcends all the apparent diversities of caste creed language or custom that's why in meghalaya the khasi tribe because many of the social scientists political scientists who i have been writing textbooks have tried to say that the adivasis the janajatis the tribes of this country do not belong to this culture they are a different nation etc this uh, uh, machination and uh, distortion of history has been going on as varaprasad reddy ji tried to put it in different words means supporting my um, understanding and presentation the khasi people of meghalaya they if there are two sons in the house the first one is ram the second one is lakshman in tribal language the names are slightly different they may not call ram but the story is same the ramayana story but the two brothers one is ram and another lakshman so ram and lakshman these are the names uh, you find in any caste in any language in any parts of this country why how it was possible because of it is one people one culture and that is why it is one nation you can go on giving such examples now the thing is in the modern days the concept of nationalism because of the nation state has been confined with the territorial demarcations or the geographical boundaries because of this geographical boundary and the sovereignty combined with it uh, people think that east timor person is not of the nationality of indonesia today as we also think pakistan bangladesh and the indian people they belong to different nationalities are the hindus and muslims of this country as of today's india they do not belong to two nationalities the very thought that two nation theory it has given rise to the unfortunate partition of this country because we started thinking that uh, because uh, muslims and hindus are two different uh, religions they are two different nations the very foundation was malicious fallacious it is an intentional it is a machination so that is why citizenship and nationality are different now i'll give an example the nationality is a socio political or socio cultural status whereas citizenship is a politico legal status citizenship is granted because of the law of the land as the constitution of the country provides a natural citizenship is there if you take birth in a particular nation you are a natural citizen that too because the constitution of the law of the land provides for that otherwise no so citizenship is different from the nationality they have become interchangeable today because of the nation state concept so that's why the citizenship is a politico legal status nationality is a socio cultural or socio political status i will give one example one person can you have can you have one nationality in his life 
or it is more nation nationalities you may say that if he is in india and he goes and accepts his citizenship in america he becomes an american citizen or in england an english citizen british citizen does he become a british national do he become american national this question has to be asked now if he doesn't move let us say he lives in his own house even then the nationality can change if you accept the nation state concept the geographical or the territorial or the politico religious nationalism if you accept that other than the cultural nationalism what will happen i will tell you a person living in dhaka in bangladesh today took birth in 1935 up to 1935 to 1947 what was his citizenship and nationality indian from 1947 to 1971 what is he he is a pakistani and from 1970 and onwards what is he he is a bangladeshi so he lives in his own old house he has not gone anywhere but his nationality has changed in his life three times no sir it cannot happen his state citizenship has changed he speaks same bangla he sings the same bangla sangeet he worship the same god and goddesses he practices his customs in social norms his relations his affinity to the land have not changed but because the political sovereignty and the political changes are there you say that his nationality has changed here is the question for the modern political scientists and legal experts and the constitutional experts what a nation constitutes that is why justice bhagavati has clearly stated that it is because of the cultural unity that underlying oneness of culture and not the common language or the political identity so this is what cultural nationalism is all about so i would not like to take uh, more time than this during the question answer session i may dwell upon certain other things which i had thought of uh, speaking to you sanskriti foundation has done a very commendable job organizing by organizing uh, such a program where the stalwarts and eminent people belonging to these specialized areas have come here to address to us it is sanskriti foundation i say for this nation foundation is sanskriti namaste